hello students today's class we are going to see the familiar topic of modern physics that is bohr's correspondence principle let us begin the topic with the statement of the principle so according to bohr the principle states that the predictions of classical that is in the micro world where you know normally experiments show validity and the quantum physics related to micro world must agree in certain limits of large quantum numbers that means it should give the same results in other words we may understand the principle as for large orbits that is for highest quantum numbers and for large energies these quantum calculations must agree with the classical calculations now let's see what is the statement of the correspondence principle the statement of the correspondence principle is any theory that is you know new theory quantum theory in physics must reduce to well established corresponding classical theory when the new theory is applied to any special situation now let us you know extend this uh, principle Uh, according to the bohr into the atom and its structure basically the bohr's theory gives only the frequencies of the spectral lines and not able to predict about the nature and intensity of the spectral lines whereas the classical theory predicts those so according to classical theory the frequency of the spectral line is the same as the orbital frequency of the electron that is the orbital frequency nu equals omega by 2 pi but according to bohr's theory the frequency of the spectral line is determined by the difference in energy between two orbital states that is mu equals the initial energy minus the final energy divided by the planck's constant h but in it can be shown that for transitions between states whose quantum numbers are very relatively high the frequency of the spectral line nu coincides with the orbital frequency so in this part of the lecture we are going to prove that that is for higher uh, quantum numbers the orbital frequency and the frequency of the spectral line coincides so that is the basic you know uh, correspondence principle given by the bohr so we shall prove that all right now we shall begin the proof by considering an atom of effectively infinite mass then the energy can be given by an equation that is en equals minus me to the power 4 divided by 8 epsilon 0 square n square h square this equation can be taken as equation number 1 where n is very large or you can take sufficiently great so for this uh, particular atom since it is you know effectively of infinite mass it is going to have high quantum number compared to the you know existing elements so the quantum number can be taken as n and if it is changed by del n that is you know and uh, decreases by 1 so we are going to consider a highest quantum number n and a change with del n that is the quantum number n is decreases by 1 then how this energy equation has to be changed then the change in energy del e can be shown by differentiating the above equation that is equation number 1 so to differentiate the above equation the 
term which we are going to differentiate is 1 by n square on the right side. Now how, how it is integrated, I mean differentiated, we will see first. Then we can substitute the value of 1 by n square in this equation. Then we can have the change in energy and we can get the frequency of the, you know, uh, related to the energy. So the term which we are going to differentiate is 1 by n square in this equation. So we shall take as 1 by n square if it is differentiated we can take it as n to the power minus 2 then it is going to be minus 2 into n to the power minus 2 minus 1. For example if we are differentiating uh, x square it becomes 2x. Similarly if you are differentiating n to the power minus 2 it goes minus 2 into n minus 2 minus 1 into del n. So it becomes minus 2 into n to the power minus 3 del n or you could write minus 2 divided by n to the power 3 del n. This value can be substituted in the equation where we are differentiating. So we can substitute this and we can see how the energy equation changes. Now the equation changed to m e to the power 4 divided by 4 epsilon 0 square h square n cube into del n. Now the frequency of the you know uh, energy related with it can be given as you could write new as del E n divided by h so m e to the power 4 divided by 4 epsilon 0 square it became h cube since we are dividing the above equation with h and it will have n cube also this equation we are going to take it as equation number 2. So to prove that the orbital frequency is equivalent to this frequency we are going to uh, use the Bohr's postulate of the orbital angular momentum and we are going to use the value of h and then we are going to substitute in this equation then we will you know derive the frequency of you know the energy related with and how it can be equated to the orbital frequency so according to Bohr's postulate you could write the orbital angular momentum L as nh cross that is equivalent to nh by 2 pi and also L could be understood as r cross p where p is the linear momentum it could be written as r into mv or we could write L as R into M into R omega or we could write this is M R square omega that is equivalent to orbital angular momentum. So we could write N H by 2 pi that is this value which is equivalent to M R square omega. Now if you try to simplify nh by 2 pi equals it is 2 pi m r squared omega or we could write the expression for hs it is 2 pi m r squared omega divided by this n. So this could be taken as equation number 3. Now substituting equation 3 in 2 that is we're going to substitute this value here in this equation of new now we're going to have new is equal to m e to the power 4 divided by 4 epsilon 0 square instead of this h cube we're going to use this equation 3 so if you substitute you're going to have 2 pi m r squared omega that is instead of h so h cube and del n is already there so we can have the frequency equation nu as m e to the power 4 divided by 32 pi cube 
I just expand this. So we'll have epsilon 0 square m cube r to the power 6 and omega cube into del n. This equation could be taken as 4. So this is the frequency of the spectral line when we have considered two energy states with the quantum numbers that is very high quantum numbers n and n minus 1. Now we are going to prove this frequency can be equal to the orbital frequency of the electron in the orbits. So to prove the orbital frequency f which is equivalent to the frequency of the you know energy emitted between the two quantum states n and n minus 1 which are relatively very high we are going to take the electron which is in the orbit which has two forces so one is the centripetal force and the other one is the electrostatic force so we are going to equate these two and then we can have the you know uh, equation for 1 by r cube from this and then we could substitute this value to get the orbital frequencies expression. So by considering the two forces, that is centripetal force and the electrostatic force between the electron and the nucleus, we could write these two equations. Now, this equation can be rearranged by substituting the value of V. So we are going to have the expression as M r squared omega square divided by r or we could have m r omega square so for equilibrium is concerned the forces can be equal so we could write m r omega square that we have converted from this only is equivalent to the electrostatic force that is 1 by 4 pi epsilon 0 into e square divided by r square now we could rearrange this equation to get an expression for 1 by r cube that is r is here 1 by r square is here so we could move this r here so we can have the expression for 1 by r cube as that is 4 pi epsilon 0 m omega square divided by e square. So this equation we are going to take it as equation number 5. Now substituting this equation 5 equation 5 in 4 we can have so in equation 4 we are going to substitute the above value that is from equation 5 1 by r cube value so if you substitute it is going to be keeping all the other terms like you know 32 pi cube epsilon 0 square then m cube and omega cube into this 1 by r to the power 6 can be written here using the above equation 5 it could be like 4 pi epsilon 0 m omega square divided by e square whole to the power square i mean 2 into del n now this could be rearranged to have an expression If we try to rearrange, we are going to have m e to the power 4 into uh, 16 pi square epsilon 0 square m square and omega to the power 4 whole divided by that is 32 pi q epsilon 0 square m cube omega cube and e to the power 4. Then if we cancel out the terms, we will have the expression for the frequency which is equal to 
omega by 2 pi which we can show for example this is m and uh, m square it can be cancelled here and uh, 32 goes 2 and 16 1 and then pi square we can cancel here it is 3 it become 1 so epsilon 0 square can be cancelled then uh, omega 4 and 3 is there so it goes 1 so now what is left out you can see this e4 also could be cancelled so in the numerator it goes omega in the denominator it is 2 pi and we have already you know del n here so we can have the expression as omega divided by 2 pi into del n that is equal to the frequency now according to this proof we could understand the frequency of the given you know uh, frequency given by the quantum theory for two large quantum numbers like n and n minus 1 and they are separated by unity becomes identical with the orbital frequency and of course you know agree with the classical theory so finally what we understand is the atom tends to behave very closely to that expected from classical theory for the large quantum numbers which we have proved and we you know uh, name that principle as the correspondence principle according to Bohr.